Greetings friends and welcome to the water ability collection or water bending ability collection. This one is very much inspired by Avatar friends. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to do the water shot, which is like a sort of frame by frame sculpt, uh, you know, classic water bending move that you get from your little character's bottle. Whoop. Next, I'm going to show you how to do the water stream, which comes not from your character's bottle, but from any water source uh, that you have in your game world, which is pretty cool. It gives that really authentic sort of water bending ability to bend water. If you're away from it, it's not going to work. And if you're sort of close to one, but not close to another, you can, you know, shoot it off into one direction. Uh, no reference to the band. And of course, if you're close to a bunch of them, you can water bend from multiple sources at once. Next, I'm going to show you how to do a sort of water splash and freeze, or technically it's known as the ice prison technique. So with this one, you can freeze your sort of splash them with water. And then, you know, when they get splashed, you turn it to ice and it freezes them in place just like that. Next, I'm going to show you how to do a water slide, friends, which we use like a little bit of a, a little bit of a surf. So it's also a little water slash ice surf. Um, I show you how to do a little bit of a water effect behind there. Getting water effects is, is quite tricky, friends, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I think I'm going to focus mainly on getting the logic of this down. And friends, if you stay towards the end, I'm also going to show you a secret technique, a forbidden technique, one that you can only use with the full moon. Okay, friends, so the first thing that we're going to do is the water shot. So for the water shot, it's going to be kind of based on like Katara classic. She has like a bottle on her hip kind of a thing. And then she water bends water out of that bottle and sort of, you know, she'll do a little water whip or, you know, shoot it off into the distance. So what we're going to need for this is the water sculpt. It's actually going to be a sculpt. Um, we're going to do it frame by frame animation style. We're going to need a bottle, of course, that where the water comes out. And that bottle is going to be attached to our character. And then, of course, we're going to need, you know, the animations and the kind of the the effect of when the water hits something, you know, so there'll be like a little water explosion when it hits something. But all right, friends, let's get stuck in. I think that the first thing that we'll do is actually make the water sculpt. So I'm going to do this in kind of frame by frame animation style. If you've seen the stretchy punch video, uh, this will all be familiar to you. So or the vibe is kind of uh, will be familiar to you but it's actually a little bit trickier because with the stretchy punch video you can kind of just make a long punch but with this the water it's essential to get the sense of the water like curving out from the source um the the, the water source you know what i mean like where the water originates from so it's kind of like you really get the sense of the water being bent you know the bending actually happening like i feel like with all the elements especially in avatar the one where you really get the sense of like water bending or the, where you really get that sense of bending, um, that's the water. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into sculpt mode. We're going to choose the curve shape. And then for colors, we're going to choose a blue. Um, then I'm going to make it so that we're going to go on and square. And we're going to, this is going to be like as the water first starts to come out of the bottle. So the water will make kind of like a little bit of a, it starts off as like a little bit of a bar, you know what I mean? Then we'll make this side a little bit smaller because this will be like, this will be the hole that it comes out of. It'll be coming out of there. You can make this a little bit smaller as well. And then you'll add like a little bit of a curve. So you'll put this off to the side and then you'll bring this one back. So it looks like the water's kind of like, zoop, you know, it's kind of like just coming out. You can make it a little bit shorter, a little bit more compressed because this is kind of like as the water is just coming out of the little water bottle that we've got then i'm going to stamp that in place then friends what's interesting is i'm actually going to put on a grid snap and i'm going to do it again i'm going to stamp this once more and i'm going to delete the original one the reason why we do this is just so that we have a grid snap that we can base our our little water bending thingy on because now in the same sculpt we are going to we'll put it like in the exact same position so that the position of this small end here is in the same spot. So it still looks like it's coming out of the same area. But we're going to go L1 and square. And then we're going to sort of bring it out a little bit further. Sorry, it sometimes jumps around a bit. But we're going to bring it out a little bit further. This is kind of like as it's curving around your hip. 
It's coming out of the water bottle. It's curving around your hip. Um, you don't have to make it too long. It's curving, curving past your hip, and then it's gonna, it's gonna go sort of in a curve, and then choo, and sort of shoot forward. So it'll go like in a curve, and then shoot forward. So we've put that one there, and it's just a little bit uh, ahead of the last one. I'm gonna go stamp in place. Now, same process, same process. We line this up so that it's here. A one in square, and then we will drag it out a little bit more. Cha -cha -ching. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Remember, with frame by frame animation like this, um, it's important to, uh, if you want it to look smooth, it's better to have more sculpts. Th think of each individual sculpt as a frame. Um, also, if you're wondering why we're doing this all as one sculpt to begin with, um, that's because we're actually we're, we're doing it as one sculpt so that we can line up all the various sculpts while they're sort of in one spot. It's easier to like line them up. And then thereafter, we're going to actually um, uh, sort of copy the sculpt and just break it down to its various constituent elements. So let's do this once more over here. Make sure it's lined up. Sometimes with the grid, it'll, as you can see, it <laughs> freaking jumps around. Um, and I don't know why it does that, but sometimes it like jumps around a bit. Okay, sweet. And let's make this a little bit more forward. And I think we can start to move the kind of the point of the water. Because now we'll say like, ooh, at this stage, the water will be completely out of the bottle. Think of this end as like where the bottle cap is. It's going to be out of the water. Uh, the water's going to be out of the bottle, and now it's kind of like an individual little stream. Stamp that in place. And now we don't have to worry too much about the exact position of where it is. But we can... We might want to move this one up like a little, a little bit. And then we will go like this. Whoops. We'll go like this. A one in square. Start to sort of add it over here straighten it up a little bit are we still good I think we're still good stamp in place and I think that's pretty cool for now so at this stage you're kind of looking at it and you're wondering like what's going on here it kind of looks like a bit of a, a bit of a mess but what we're going to do is we're going to go out of that sculpt now and we're going to now clone it. And this first clone, I'm going to delete all the little extra sculpts except for the first one, which we've got over here. Now I'm going to copy this again and I'm going to delete all of them except the second one. Now I'm going to copy them and I'm going to delete all of them except the third one. Then I'm going to copy once again, delete all of them except the uh, fourth one, one, two, three, and then finally we're going to do the fifth one. So we'll delete, sorry, we'll delete these, 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 and these. So friends, the reason why we make it as one sculpt to begin with is because just so that we can use this, this, um, little sculpt the curve tool that I've got here I can like adjust this and so on and so forth and if I make a new one I've got the old shape that I've used whereas if I begin a new sculpt I'll be like okay new sculpt ah oh, you know the shape that you've made is lost so it's useful because you can just make it like very uniform throughout um, and all these sorts of things the last thing that we're going to do is actually add in a the like kind of water shot so what it'll look like when it flies off into the distance and that one will be basically like this except like almost completely straight so we can go into this one and for this one we can actually make a new sculpt because this one we don't have to worry about the you know the curviness and getting it to look sort of uniform because it's pretty much just going to be uh, straight so we're going to go make it a little bit smaller we can kind of you know use this as a bit of a a base as it were um, put it there next to it so we can get the kind of vibe and then let's stretch it out 
And now you might want to make it a little bit smaller. Um, and this side maybe like a little bit bigger. If you find the grid snap is being annoying, you can actually just sort of give up on that and turn off the grid snap quickly. Um, so yeah, let us go into sculpt mode, curve, get ourselves that blue business. I want it square. Make it a little bit thinner. Make this side a little bit thinner. Shush, shush, shush. Now you can sort of turn on the grid snap. We can align it and be like, okay, that looks pretty cool. We might want to sort of get it a little bit straighter. So get that one there, this one sort of in line, this one sort of in line, this one sort of in line. There we go. So it's a little bit straighter. We kind of align it to the grid there. It's a little bit finicky, friends. Definitely a little bit finicky. Um, and even there, it's not perfectly straight once again. So you might want to shift this over to the side. Shift this over to the side. Okay, cool. So that looks pretty straight. As, as you can see, friends, there's a little bit of finicky business that happens in, uh, in this. But uh, you can really find and make stuff that's really cool if you do it in this fashion. Okay, sweet. So now we have the various stages of our water sort of getting flung, flung about. So we have it as it's coming out. And it goes doo doo doo, and it sort of grows, and then it'll sort of shoot off like in this form. So now we can uh, delete this original one, and we can now begin to move these so that they are like occupying the same space and within the same group. So I'll bring them over L1 and X. Whoops. L1 and X to scope into that group. Alrighty, L1 and X. Let's go up into the group. Let's go L1. Oops. L1 and X. Make sure you don't accidentally sort of scope into the um into the ground. Okay, sweet. So now we have this group, but they're all individual sculpts, which is very cool. And then this guy over here, cha -cha 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 ching We can sort of add and sort of line it up a bit. You might need to reduce the size of the grid snap with L1 and down on the D-pad. So we might make it here. We might also make this a little bit smaller. Okay, cool. And you can, of course, add this to the grid. Okay, cool. Well, not to the grid, but to the group. Okay, sweet friends. So a little bit complex, a little bit tricky. But I think we've, we've made something that looks completely nonsensical at the moment. <laughs> but now what we're going to do is... We're going to select all of our constituent elements. So if we look here, we've got all our bits. And we're going to make them invisible. And we're also going to make them non-collidable. And now you're thinking, me lad, you've lost your mind. Bro. All, all that work and it's invisible. Well, friends, I'll tell you why. I'm going to show you by adding in a little timeline. And in this timeline, we're going to make it very small. We'll make it like, let's say, a second. And then we'll press right on the D-pad and you press it until you can start to see the frames, these individual sort of lines. And you can also see the frame numbers. So what we're going to do is add in a keyframe. And on the first keyframe, or the first sort of, you know, frame of the, of the animation, the first bit is going to be visible. Then we add in another frame, another keyframe. And that's going to be the second part of the sculpt is going to be visible. Then we add in another for the third part. I think that's the third part. Or is the third part? I think, is this the third part? Yeah, sorry, this is the third part. It's a little bit tricky to see. It might actually be smarter to do this before you add them back into one group. Then the fourth part is this dude over here. I'll make that one visible. Then finally we'll have the fifth part being visible so now if I turn off the um, preview and visibility and I put my little timeline on the loop this is what we're gonna get we're gonna have so at the moment it's I'll just move this I'll just I'll just see what's cracking here so that's looking pretty cool friends it's looking a little bit fast so if you want to make it a tad slower you can go into your timeline and you can reduce the speed. 
So here we get a bit of like a a little bit of a vibe going on at the moment. But we want to make it so that instead of this little blue piece over here is sort of sticking around and being annoying, we want to make it so that it actually gets shot out at the end. So what we're going to do is on the inside, we're going to go into our sculpt and on the last little piece of the sculpt, which is the sort of the fifth, the fifth frame, as it were, we're going to put a emitter and we're just going to surface snap it on. And what is it going to emit? It's going to emit this guy this sort of front bit and it's going to be we're going to put on our grid snap and it's going to be shooting it forward to ching so it's emitting this sort of our long shooty outy piece that we made the one that we made last that's very straight and it's going to do it once and it's going to do it pretty fast let's say let's go for around 10 meters per second to begin with and see how that looks and then i think that will be cool friends so what we're going to do is we're going to turn off this emitter and now in our keyframe or sorry in our timeline we're going to add in a keyframe that turns on the emitter so when it gets to this point it's going to turn the emitter on so now let's actually get this timeline outside of that group because at the moment i actually made it inside the group so now it's going to go like this Swing, 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 swing. So it's shooting the water out. Um, one thing that I've neglected to do is make it so that, because uh, as you can see, the water is going, but it's sort of, you know, it falls off kind of a thing. What I'm going to do for that is I'm going to go into the sculpt for the shooty outy piece of the water, the water shot sort of section, and I'm going to go ignore gravity. So here we are, and we go zing, zing, zing. So now we can shoot water off into the distance, just like that, friends. I'll turn off preview invisibility. So that's looking pretty cool. You might want to add a little, add a little bit of a, like a pause here. So now you get a better sense of what's going on there. If you feel like it's happening too soon, you can of course move it so that the frame that emits the water shot is just after this. So it's kind of like your water appears out of your little water bag and then it shoots off into the distance. You may wish to adjust your emitter that shoots out the water shot so that it is, um, you know, the, the emitted object lifetime is only like, let's say, five seconds. I mean, even five seconds is pretty long. We could make it uh, in three seconds. Cha -cha -ching. So now let's give a look. We turn off preview invisibility. So we get a bit of that like smooth like water motion it's not like the smoothest animation you could make something smoother than this um all you need is of course more frames and each sort of frame think of a frame as like a separate sculpt in this particular style of uh like sculpting frame by frame animation so we can shoot off water just like that but now friends we want to actually connect it to our character so what we're going to do is i think we'll go into our character and we shall go into their sort of body sculpt go into their sort of body just like that and we're going to connect it to their pelvis so this sort of section of their body so if i go again we've got our character i want an x to go into their sort of major group i want an x again while we're over their pelvis and then we can start sort of shooting it from out of their pelvis so now shwang 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 if you feel like it's off a little bit the angle there you can of course just adjust it so on and so forth whatever you sort of need that's a little bit off as well so that's looking that's looking pretty cool it's like i might reduce the size inward a little bit a tiny bit more or a lot of these things require a lot of tweaky tweaky tweaks okay that looks pretty cool swish wing swish wing but it's not complete friends because at the moment it looks like they're pulling water out of their backside um, which isn't a vibe. So what we're going to do to alleviate the um, the stress of that situation is to actually design a little bit of a water bottle. And there'll be nothing fancy here. I'm just going to go into sculpt mode, and I'm going to get myself a curve again, which is our you know that's our shape shape of the day. We're going to go curve. We're going to go let's say like a dark blue. It can be anything. And I'm just going to make a bit of like a you know water tribe water bottle, or a very sad excuse for one. I'm just going to make a little bit of a, a stretched out curve shape. I'm going to reduce the size on this end 
and give a bit of a like curve over here. So it looks like a little bit of a, a little bit of a bladder, as it were, a water bladder. Um, I'm sure that you can you can make like a very cool bottle, um, you know, water storage device. But this is just my simple one for now. Okay, sweet. Next up, I'm going to um, go into a grid snap and just align this to the grid. And then I'm going to go back into it. So we're L1 and X, we're still in the sculpt. And we're going to go Tools. And we're going to have Cut Out. Now I'm going to go into Shapes. And I'm going to go Cylinder. And now we can make it so that we can cut out a piece of this uh, bottle. And this will the section that we're going to cut out will be like the lid. Or the bottle cap, you know. So I'm going to go Colors. And I'm going to go Black for this one. And I'm going to just take a little section out. And now if we go out, we have two sections to our bottle. We have the bottle, and then we have our little lid. To make it look sort of authentic, like it's an actual bottle cap, I'm going to take it out a little bit, and then there we go. So we've got like a little bottle cap. You can change the color of it. So, for example, we might make it like, let's say we make it um, like a brown, like a dark brown. We can change the color of that. Um, just paint it there. Okay, friends, so now we have our water bottle. Make sure that you make the bottle cap and the bottle itself one group. I'm sorry, it's not the most the most fancy looking, but I think it'll do the job for now. So we want to uh, sort of align it so that the bottle... You can put it on your back, you know what I mean? You can put it on your hip, like over here. Um, I've just got it sort of on the back, so it kind of looks like it goes around the... Kind of looks like the butt. Um, it goes around the hip and then sort of shoots off. So I'm going to put it sort of here. And then I'm going to look at our little, I'll put the old preview and visibility on. And we're going to go shwing, shwing, shwing. Okay, so as you can see, it's a little bit messed up. The problem now is that uh, these boys are colliding. So I'm going to go into this quickly. I'm going to select them all, and as far as I'm aware, yeah, collidable should be off. So I'm going to then go into this chap and make these chaps uh, non-collidable. And it also looked like the lid fell, so I'm just going to go into there and turn movable off. So let's have a look now. Yeah, that looks better again. That looks like it's cool. So that's looking pretty cool. One thing that we may wish to do, friends is um, take this timeline and actually add it into our puppet themselves. So this will become part of our sort of characters uh, animations. So which is looking pretty cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a little keyframe to make it so that like the bottle lid like moves a bit. It looks like it kind of moves open. So I'm going to quickly actually Move all of these keyframes. Let me get all this. Whoops. Let me get all this business out of the way, so that we've just got our timeline in question. So all of these chaps that make our various friends visible, we're going to move that down just a little bit. Move that down just a little bit, and I'm going to make the the bottle cap like open. So the first frame, of course, nothing will happen. Then I'll make another frame, which will be the bottle cap sort of like opening. So I might go like zoop, something like that. You know, it doesn't have to be too fancy. You can go either way. You can go from the top, you can go to the bottom. You can go like boo. Um, you may need to adjust it however you desire. But it's cool to have just like a bit of a a bit of a like opening of the lid and then it'll sort of close afterwards so now if we look it'll go so let's go preview and visibility all that sort of stuff it looks now like the the water kind of comes out of the little satchel the little water bottle whoop and the like little lid opens there, which is pretty cool. It's not like the, sm the smoothest lid animation. You can add a connector there and make it like a lot smoother and stuff. This is just this is just kind of a, a little bit of a working example for you to see the the main gist of it. Okay, sweet. So next up, it's time for us to actually add our like you know character doing the bending animation. So I'm just gonna give us a bit of a keyframe there. 
And I think what I'll do, I'll do first is I'll make the character sort of move their arm back like they're sort of reaching for the water kind of a vibe. Oops. I don't actually have to animate this hand. Let's just animate this one. We might do a bit of like a shoulder situation. So they sort of lean back. So they'll go kind of like... They'll lean back and then they'll sort of, you know, drive their hand forward. Like they're shooting off the... Shooting the water off into the distance. Shooting the water off into the distance. Okay. You may need to adjust the sort of timing of this and everything. Okay. So let's extend the length of this keyframe, which is an animation keyframe, and it's going to look like... Okay, cool. And then we'll copy the original keyframe, which is just an empty one. And now let's have a look. So let's. So there's a lot of keyframes here, friends. What's going on? I'm going to change the color of this keyframe to blue so that we know that it relates to the water itself. These are the keyframes that make the water sculpt visible. This is the keyframe that emits the... Uh, so let's change the name of this to emit. This is the thing that emits the water shot. This keyframe is the related to the bottle cap. So it's important to name slash or name and or color the keyframe so you know what's going on. So that's the bottle cap. Let's make that uh, like a bit of a brown, orangey brown. And then this is just our animation up top. So if we look at just the animation, we go hua and we move our hand into the distance. This section, the blue section, if we look at that, let's keep an eye on that. We can see that it makes the various sections of our water become visible. Shing, shing, shing. The purple one is the one that emits the water shot. And of course, we can look here and see our bottle cap moving. If we look at the orange keyframe, we can see it's opening there. It's opening there. Very nice. Okay, sweet. So let's give it a bit of a look. I think we'll also connect a little button press to it. So let's connect it to something like square. And we'll also make it so that the playback mode is once and not loop. Okay, sweet. So now if I press square. Swing. So it's a little bit, uh, the, the animation of the arm in particular is a little bit sluggish. So I think we can make that, we can make that business a little bit faster. So we can make it so that we go maybe like this. Okay, cool. Once again, this is this is looking cool. It's pretty much now just at the tweaking stage to make it look a little bit uh, sort of smoother. So you might make it be like, okay, let's try that. I think the build up sort of to get there is a little bit slow. So I'm going to move all of this business a little bit closer to this side, move that over here, move that over here, so it's a little bit shorter. Now we'll go. Whoosh, whoosh. So yeah, friends, I mean, that's looking pretty cool. Um, as you can see, when you move while doing it, it might be a, it might get messed up because, of course, as you move, your pelvis will move into the air, and this is related to your pelvis. If it's bounce, bouncing into stuff like that and exploding, whatever, you know, rolling off into the distance, you might just want to make it so that this chap over here, you can either make it so that this is not collidable, so it'll just go through stuff, or of course, the last stage of our video is to make it so that when it hits stuff, it'll explode, and it'll do just a bit of a water splash. So, let's make ourselves a little water splash, we'll go into paint mode, we'll get ourselves the splat, which is a nice watery looking uh, paint stroke, and then we'll go blue. And we'll just create a bit of a, let's say, we can use draw flex to make something that gets sort of thinner. Gets a little bit thinner. As you let go of R2, the sort of thickness of the stroke is reduced. So that's looking pretty cool. We will go to this chap and we will make it so that the, we'll add some duplicates to this paint stroke. 
So that looks pretty cool. And then we will go playback, uh, the animation setting. We'll go playback speed. We'll make it sort of like this. And then we'll go pulse. And we'll make it so that it doesn't loop. So it'll go sploosh. So that's a little bit slow. So we'll speed up the speed. Increase the speed. Sploosh. Sploosh. So let's go over this again once uh, slowly. So we've increased the number of them with the rotational duplicates. We've gone in all directions. We can make tons and tons and tons. But I think we'll go for 20%. Then we'll go to animation. We've increased the speed of it so that it animates the stroke. It goes in the direction that it has been painted in. Uh, we turned off loop and we turned on pulse so that we have a nice little explosion here. You can increase the time offset so it's not kind of all simultaneous. Um, and you can also increase the trail length so it looks a little bit longer. If you make it very small, it'll look like individual little strokes. You know, kind of just a bit of a splash. So you can find a nice happy medium there, whatever works for you. Um, so there'll be like a little bit of a splash. I might also want to increase the brightness of this. Ooh, it depends. It depends what you want. You know, if you want to make it look like a like a f big flashy explosion, you can do it like that. Then we will go to our our little water shot, which, as we know, is this piece here, the sort of straight piece. And we are going to make it so that this well, we'll actually add a little bit of logic onto this chap. So we'll go into this guy over here. We'll go sensors and input. Uh, oh, sorry, we'll actually go logic and processing and get ourselves a microchip. Stamp it on there. And for this microchip, we are going to make it so that when it touches something, so we'll add in an impact sensor, which looks like this little ricocheting ball over here. So we'll get impact sensor. We'll put that down. And we'll make it so that, okay, cool. When it hits something, it is going to emit, whoops, it's going to emit this lovely blue, blue explosion. Emit speed zero, emit mode once. And we'll make it so that emitted object lifetime is like 1.5 seconds. So it'll, it'll explode and then it'll disappear. So when it hits something, it will explode. And not only that, but the water shot itself will disappear. And that will be in our little water shot over here. Um, so let's have a squiz to see if this works. There may be an issue. Um, but I like to see if things work or don't work and then fix them. So that if you run into those problems yourself, you can fix them yourselves. So I'm just going to leave it as is. I'll create a little wall for us here. Let's see if this works. Yeah. Okay, sweet. That actually, that actually looks pretty cool. It kind of, it kind of looks like it only explodes after the fact. <laughs> you know what's happening. You know what's happening. I didn't change the position of where it's being emitted. So now let me go into this sculpt. I'll go to emit, and of course it's emitting it like all the way over here. So let us emit it like right on top of the water shot itself. A little bit tricky to see. Might need to reduce the size of it a bit. But there we go. So that that was actually the issue. I'd, I'd emitted it in the wrong spot. So that's a good one to check out. Make it so that, not, not where the bauble is, but actually where the paint stroke itself, where the center of that is. That's where you want it to emit. Okay, that looks cool. So I'm going to go here. So that looks pretty cool, friends. Yeah. It's a little bit small, if you ask me, that little splash. So you might want to um, increase the size of it. Um, but of course, that is all up to you, friends, and whatever your particular preference for it is. So we go here. Yeah. It might be also like a little bit slow for you. Um, in the event that you want to speed up how fast it goes, we'll go into our sculpt, we'll go into our emitter, and we'll increase the speed over here. So now it'll be twice as fast. So there you are, friends. That's how you make a little bit of a... And as you can see, if I sort of move, it sort of goes into the ground. Um, you might want to make it so that when you're moving, your character like... Uh, or when you use your ability, your character can't move. Um, but yeah, friends, so this is pretty much how you do a nice little water shot. So as you can see, our bottle opens over there, the lid sort of opens, the water sort of rushes out, and then we sort of shoot off our little water shot. Swish, swing. So that's looking pretty cool, friends. That was lengthy, and as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going into it. 
Um, and <laughs> this isn't even the most complicated one, friends, I'm telling you. Like, water is totally different. Like, fire and earth are easy. Water is the most difficult, the most, uh, as they say in Afrikaans, ingewikkeld, as in, like, complicated. Um, the most, the most complicated element to do. Um, but I think it also looks really, really cool. So now that we've got the first one um, done and dusted, let us move on to another one. I think now what I'm going to show you is how to bend a water from a water source that is not on your character. So this actually requires a little bit of logic, but it looks really cool um, and you can do some really awesome stuff with it. So let's get stuck in with that. Whoop, whoop. Okay, friends, now we're going to move on to the water blast. Now, this is kind of like a classic uh, water bending move. The, the sort of trick to it is that we'll be drawing water not from our character or from like a particular sculpt or whatever. We'll actually be able to draw water from any source, sort of spin it around our character a bit and then shoot it forward and so that it'll, you know, hit an enemy or hit a surface and it'll do a bit of a splash. Um, so this one looks really cool and it really gives that impression of being able to pull water from any source on the map and it can be anywhere in the game world. So yes, friends, there are quite a few steps to it. But I think if we take it slow, we'll be able to get it uh, done quite nicely. There'll also be quite a few tweaks here and there, but let's get stuck in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go into sculpt mode and create a ball. We're going to make the ball blue. And this is going to be kind of like the water that we sort of will be directing. The water that we'll be bending. So we're going to put it down at first. At first, it just looks like a bit of a circle. I'm going to turn off the grid snap. I use the grid snap just to kind of get it sort of straight. Um, yes, and now I'm going to go into gadgets, logic and processing, get ourselves a microchip. And now in this microchip, friends, we are going to put down a selector. Okay, sweet. Now in the selector, we're going to put down a few things and we're going to put down a mover um, or rather a follower and that's going to sort of control its movement but how are we going to actually or what are we going to be moving it towards well we're going to go into our character themselves we're going to scope into our character and we're going to put down a tag and we're going to put this tag sort of behind our character sort of centrally sort of behind them so we want to make it so that the water comes sort of behind the character and then it will swoosh, it'll sort of curve around them and then shoot forward. So we're going to put it fairly centrally just behind their back. And make sure you move the white little bauble there, the little gizmo, so that it's, you know, fairly central. You can change the position as you desire. And I'm going to call this water point A. Fabulous. So back on our little water ball over here it looks it doesn't look too fancy at the moment but i think the logic is the, the coolest part at the moment so we're going to go into our little microchip that we have we're going to go move as an output and then choose ourselves get ourselves a follower we're going to connect it to output a so by default it'll be running <clears throat> now we're going to make it so that it follows water point a we're going to change the strength to 100% and we're going to, as for speed, we can make that, let's say, something like 5 meters per second. So if it's over here, it's going to go, shushing, it's going to move towards our character. Unfortunately, at the moment, it's also going to knock our character about like that. So the first thing we're going to do is go to um, physical properties, or sorry, we're going to go to collision labels, this one over here, and we're going to turn off collides with friend. Our puppet over here, their label is friend. So that means if it comes towards them, it's going to move behind them without sort of knocking them out of the way. At the moment, of course, it kind of just gets there, but it doesn't do anything fancy. So that's looking pretty cool. We want it to move there. But then we want to make it so that when it gets there, it's then going to curve around them and sort of shoot forward. So what we're going to do for that is get ourselves a trigger zone. This is in sensors and input. And we're going to go things to detect tag. And what tag are we going to detect? We're going to detect water point A. We're also going to want to change the position of this trigger zone because it's a little bit off center to begin with. And we'll reduce the size of it. Probably about 
let's see what is that value 0 0.4 0 0.4 0 0.5 is pretty good i would say depending of course on the size of your little water ball there okay sweet i'm going to connect this to b so we're going to move towards a and then when it gets to b it's going to then or when we're going to move towards a and then when it gets to a it's going to take us to output b so what is output b going to do well we want to make it so that it curves around us and shoots forward. The way that we're going to do this is because if we just attach a tag like we have over here, if we say copy this and just put this in front of our character, of course the water is only going to move to a single point. So we need to make our water point B something that can actually move forward. So we're actually going to make it a projectile. And the way we're going to do it is like this. We're going to go into modes, sculpt mode. We'll put on a grid snap quickly. And we will create ourselves just a little little, um, little cube, just like that. We can turn off the grid snap again. And now we are going to go tag. And we will put this tag on our little cube. And we're going to call this water point B. Fabulous. So what happens is when our character uses their particular particular ability, they are going to shoot this this little tag forward, and then the water is going to follow it. So I'm going to put down a little timeline, and this timeline will become the whole you know animation, and, and it'll look cool. But for now, all we're going to put in it is an emitter. So gadgets moves an output, and grab ourselves an emitter. Of course, this emitter is going to emit, we'll scope out quickly with L1 in circle, it's going to emit this little cube, and we'll put it sort of in front of us, in front of our character, pretty central, it doesn't have to be too exact, of course you can be exact if you like, but we will be exact when it comes to the direction. So we're going to go grid snap, and we're going to point it forwards, so it's kind of moving like directly forward. We're only going to, be, when it comes to playback mode, or sorry, emit mode, it's going to be once. So if we do a quick test, it's going to, do, it shoots it out. <laughs> At the moment, it kind of falls to the floor, because I quickly, uh, I just forgot to make it ignore gravity. So we're going to go into our little sculpture there, and we're going to go, we're actually going to turn Collider off as well, and we're going to go ignore gravity. So now if we shoot it out, zing, it sort of goes off into the distance, which is fabulous. And I think we'll... We'll go into this and make it so that the emitted object lifetime is just 5 seconds. Okay, sweet. So it goes off. And it does its thing. Fabulous. And it'll eventually disappear. Okay, sweet. So that's what we're going to have for now. And now we're going to go back into our water ball over here. And we're going to make it so that we copy that uh, follower, connect it, this one to B, and we're going to say water point B. But for this one, friends, it's a little bit funky because we're going to set overall damping to 100%. But I'll just give you a little bit of a demonstration of what happens if we've got it at 100%. So we go here. Whing, it goes to the point and then it sort of goes quite straight in that direction. So what happens is when damping is 100%, it basically means it'll take the shortest route between A and B. So it goes to A and then it'll go just like that. If you reduce the damping, it'll go on a slightly more curvy route to B, as you can see. Woohoo! So the curvy route is cool, but we actually want a bit of variation. And I'm going to show you how to do that. We want to make it so that when it starts out, there's a little bit of a curve. But then after a short time, we want it to move quite... Um, uh, we want the damping to be 100%. So there's a bit of a curve, but then it goes like straight. So the way that we're going to do that is... We're going to animate, get ourselves a timeline, connect it to B. Then we're going to make it quite short. Probably even one second is enough. And we'll turn off our grid snap. And we'll put on a little keyframe. And in this keyframe, while we're recording, we're going to go to um, this follower and reduce the damping to 60%. Something, something like 60%. And then we'll add a normal keyframe here. So that basically, for the first part of this animation, it sort of goes whoop. So there's a bit of a curve, but then it gets on position 
like that. Because if you keep the damping too low, the the ball, the water sort of ball is going to go wee, and it's going to have too much fun. It'll sort of be too indirect. This one, we get a nice bit of a curve, and it also goes and it kicks butt, and it, it'll go forward and give that impression of like the force of the water increasing, you know, as you sort of wa water bend it as you direct it. So at the moment, when it's just this this water ball, it's not very impressive. But I'm going to do a quick, a few visual edits. I'm going to go looseness. I'm going to increase the looseness of that. I'm also going to go into modes, style mode, and make it so that our fleck is this splat over here. Because by default, it's the heavy one, which is just this sort of squarish one. But we're going to go with splat. That's quite a nice one. And I might also go with effects and, you know, give it, give it a bit of wave there. Maybe give it a bit of um, flow. And <clears throat> so our water's looking not too bad, not too bad, but we're not really getting the sense of like a stream of water getting sort of shot forward. <clears throat> so what we're going to do for that one is we're going to go into our emitter and I'm just going to surface snap it to the floor. Now this emitter in particular can basically be used wherever there'll be like a water source. So for example, let me just demonstrate we'll be like okay we'll make it so that there is a pool of water here so i'm going to go into sculpt mode and just make a bit of a, a pool of water <laughs> so this is looking cool and i'll go here and i will <clears throat> i'll just let's see i'll go looseness amount and i'll go some waves so we've just got ourselves a bit of a pool of water So nothing too fancy here, but it just gives the impression of water, you know what I mean? Now we're going to take our emitter, and we're going to surface snap it on. Now what we're going to emit is our little ball here. It's going to come out of the, the source of water. You can sort of send it upwards a bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. In fact, if you set it like a little bit off, it'll look cool because the water will do like a bit of a bend. It'll be like, Whoa, you know, it'll give you that nice stream. Um, emit speed, you can set that to 5, it can be whatever, leave it as the default. Time between emits is going to be 0 seconds. Uh, emit mode is multiple or continuous. Emitted object lifetime, 5 seconds. Max emitted at once, infinite, but max emitted will be 30. So let's have a look. It's going to emit 30 of them, and it'll give a bit of a, it'll give a, bit of a stream. <laughs> okay. okay, so the problem there was, it was actually, they were colliding with each other. So you're going to go into collision labels and say that it doesn't collide with missile. And then you're going to go to the label and set it as missile. So now it'll be able to collide with the wall, say, for example. But it won't collide with our friend and it won't collide with itself. Okay, let's try again. So <laughs> it, looks like, it looks like it's colliding with our friend again. So what we might want to do is turn off colliding just for a second so we can get that impression. Okay, so what happened here is it looks like when it flies over, it takes a little bit too long to find our trigger zone or our tag. So what we can do is increase the size of the zone. Increase the size of the zone. Sorry, it's a little bit, a little bit tricky to see what's, what's cracking here. What we might want to do is we'll quickly deactivate this timeline. And let's try again. So as you can see here, okay, that's pretty cool. So what's happening is the water comes around and it shoots forward and it follows after the thing that we've done there, which looks pretty cool, but it's a little bit, the, the curve that it does there was a little bit too intense. So I'm going to go back to our timeline and I'm going to go to water point B and I'm going to make it so that it's just, let's say, 80%. Perfect. Now let's connect this again. Let's try again. So that's looking pretty cool, friends. So the water gives a nice sort of curvature as our character sort of draws the water out and then swoosh, they sort of shoot it forward just like that, which is, friends, I think it's looking pretty cool. So as you can see, there's quite a few tweaks you have to make here. Like for me, the damping was a little bit too low. So the water kind of went on a big curve. Um, so it really depends on, you know, whichever, whichever system sort of works. Now what's cool about this, friends, is you can actually take it from multiple water sources. So let's try again. Swoosh. So for example, that one, 
was maybe a little bit you see it sort of goes like a little bit under the ground sort of a thing um, which isn't too much of a problem I reckon if we change the direction of the emitter it might help that a little bit Swish. so it does a little bit of a loop-de-loop -loop. It sort of goes around our character a bit and then we sort of shoot it off into the distance you can of course also change the position of this you can make it so that there's multiple sources of water and then whoosh, and it sort of shoots off if you find that um, so for example if I delete if I delete this one and I go just this this guy over here what happens is oh that actually looks pretty good so it sort of draws it from one water source if I add it to another as you can see the water goes off into the side and it has a time if if you f find something where like it looks like the water like there as you can see here the water makes a bit of like a circle woo -woo -woo -woo. it goes around a few times no worries all you have to do is slightly increase the size of the old trigger zone because when it makes that sort of it does that sort of orbit around the tag it just means that it's trying to get closer to the tag um and it's just at a point where it's sort of trying to get there but doesn't quite reach it so you can just keep increasing the size of the zone and hopefully it'll it'll make it uh it'll make it look cool Swish. um yeah and of course you'll always try and sort of um find a bit of a balance between this and uh see what see what works for you so if so for example there you see i made it a little bit too small so i think i'll move it up to 0 0.8 Ooh. Okay, sweet. So we're getting a nice bit of a stream. There's a little bit of roundaboutiness, um, but I think it's looking pretty cool there. Next up, friends, what we're going to do is make it so that our water actually does a bit of a splash when it um, when it hits something. So what we're going to want to do there is just what we did with our water shot. We're going to go um, and make it so that uh, when it impacts with something then it is going to da, 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 then it is going to uh, sort of destroy itself and emits an explosion so it'll destroy itself and it will emit an explosion now of course we took collidable off so the the impact sensor isn't going to work just yet but let's just get to the explosion first so I've got this emitter emit speed is zero emit mode is once and we're going to line up the explosion so that it's on the on the sort of water ball itself. This is the water splash. So now, because it's not collidable, let's just make it collidable again. Make sure that it doesn't collide with missile or with friend. And I think let's make the floor. Let's make the floor um, uh, like scenery. For example, oh sorry, let's make the floor scenery, and it will collide with scenery. So if it hits the floor, it'll have a bit of a splash. So it's collidable. That's looking cool. So at the moment, it was it was hitting our chap, which I'm a little bit confused by because he's a he's a friend. Maybe I must go into this again and let me just sort of select all these bits. So this should all be this should all be friend. Let's try this again. Yeah, it seems to be knocking him on the head. Which is interesting. But maybe what I'll do is I'll go to his collision levels and make it so he doesn't collide with the missile. And then maybe... There we go. Okay, sweet. So what the problem was, was this wasn't... These guys weren't colliding with him, but he was colliding with them. So you've got to make this a missile and this a friend. This doesn't collide with friend and this doesn't collide with missile. So now we can have... Woohoo! Our water goes. And then it'll hit a surface... Just like that, and it'll do a nice little splash, which is looking pretty cool. So the logic of that is uh, is working. Now I think what we'll do is maybe uh, add in a little bit more logic because we want to make it so that you can actually only draw water from a source that's nearby. So I'm just going to delete this little water source here, and I'm going to add a little microchip. And now this microchip is going to have this emitter in it. And it's going to work like, okay, sweet, it will emit it, you know, out of here, for example. 
Sweet, sweet, sweet. So the water will get shot out of there. And once it has been uh, shot out of there, it's going to, you know, do do what it does best. As we can see, woohoo! So at the mo at the moment, it's it's hitting the floor, so it's a little bit too, a little bit too close. So if we move a little bit further away, whoosh, <laughs> once again, it keeps hitting the floor. Um, let's move it over here. Damn, this thing keeps hitting the floor. Let me try in this region. There we go. So uh, there's a little bit of sort of bugginess there. Um, so what you might want to do is if you find that it keeps hitting the floor, you might want to raise up water point A. So then it's like a little bit more if we move it closer then. Then we have a bit of a cool a cool water vibe going on there, um, which I think looks pretty cool uh, in my own personal opinion. So that's looking pretty cool, friends. But let's carry on with uh, this bit of logic now. So we've got our, our emitter, but we want this to only shoot out water if our character is actually nearby. So we're going to uh, look for a tag, and the tag is going to be in our animation. So let's call it um, water pull. So the water pull tag is going to be where my character is. Very nice. And this emitter will only be activated when it detects the water pull tag. So I'm going to go trigger zone. It's going to be around this region. Wherever the sort of microchip is. And we'll make it pretty big. And then we'll go look for tag. And it's going to look for the water pull tag. We'll make the tag a little bit long there. And then we will... This, this emitter is the one that shoots out our point B. So that's the thing that our water follows. We can move that um, down a little bit. And now I'm going to do a little bit of an animation. So it's kind of like our character does a like a cool water bendy arm swing. So they'll sort of like their arm will go back. Oh, sorry. So I'll get this keyframe. I'll first start with the default keyframe. So the arm will go back. Then it'll go sort of down. And then, so we'll connect that up there. So it goes, ah, oh, it's not very smooth, is it? So we'll go, ah, oh, it actually looks a little bit like crap. So if we go, ah, no, it looks, it looks terrible. <coughs> okay, we'll copy this again. And this one will be like, the, let's say the character moves a bit like lower. So hopefully we'll get like a bit of a... And then we'll go sort of like... So then they'll go... And they'll sort of shoot the water blast, the water jet, the water stream forward. <clears throat> and they'll also hold that position for a little bit before coming back to the original position. So it'll look like that'll be them sort of doing a little bit of a water bend. Um, it's not the smoothest, so we might, or it's a little bit slow, so we might go like <laughs> we might want to speed up the emitter there. Oh, we'll, put, we'll put the emitter first, so it goes Okay, sweet. So our animation is actually a little bit too slow. So I'm going to go like this. So we'll go here. And the, the procedural animations are messing with it a little bit. So I'm just going to put in a keyframe here. The keyframe here is going to turn off procedural animation. All three of these. And it will be for the duration of the ability. It's going to go, 
Oh, and it might also be... I'll also turn off poses, which also sometimes messes with animations. So we'll go here. So if you have a look, it's cool, but maybe I could make it a little bit faster. So here. Here. That's actually pretty cool. Okay, maybe like a little teeny weeny bit faster than that. With all these friends, there's always a lot of tweaking, but I think at the end of the day, you get something really cool. And we'll make it even slightly faster. Because there's always with water bending, there's like, you see the ability being cast. There's like almost the ability is cast and then the water follows. You know, there's always a bit of a delay with water bending. That's pretty cool. So the, the water sort of very much follows. Where with fire bending, um, you know, it's generally as soon as you do a punch, it follows. But with water bending, it's like you do a punch and then the water goes. So, friends, that's looking pretty cool. So let's quickly go over this once again. So this first part is just an animation, nothing fancy here. This part over here disables our procedural uh, animation and the poses so that it doesn't mess with the animation itself. Here we have an emitter which shoots out the point B so that our water, when it flies around us, it has something to move towards. Uh, the reason we do that, once again, friends, is just so that the water always... Um, is following where our character is facing because it's the this projectile point B projectile is shot out from where our character is facing if you try to use movers and local space and you know scene space it gets kind of messed up you know the water will only go like in one direction and it won't be nice so this is the system we use and then we have our water pull tag and let's see if it's let's see if it actually works because I'm gonna put a water over here and if the ability is used okay it looks like it it looks like it's still up. <laughs> well, I didn't connect it. It helps to connect your logic tips 101. Connect the wires. Okay, sweet. So that looks cool. Oh, actually, I think it's... It actually isn't close enough. So let's, let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, sweet. So now, water pool. So that looks cool. Um, if we put one over here, however, it's too far away. If we have another one over here, it's going to go... Whoa! Okay, that one's a little bit too close. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, it, at this stage, it's it's a little bit, it's hitting, it's hitting the water a little bit, it's hitting the floor. Um, in which case, I mean, you could you could be a little bit of a cheat, and you could make it so that like the floor is the let's see, let's say yeah, so the floor is scenery. So we could be like, okay, cool, you know. Um, it's not gonna, it's not gonna collide with scenery, let's say. So it won't collide with, uh, scenery. And, uh, the scenery, of course, won't collide with, with it. But this is scenery, but it still collides with missile, so it'll still get hit. So if you go here, you'll see collides with, and it still collides with missile. So let's give a check. So it does go through the ground a little bit, you know, it's like a little bit, uh, there's a little bit of a uh, jankiness there, but this logic is, there's so much sort of physics going on here that um, I think we have to, there's a, there's a little bit of um, imperfection here and there, but uh, generally speaking, I think it works, it works pretty well and it looks pretty cool. Once again, if you find it doing that circly circly business, um, just experiment with the size of the trigger zone, make, maybe make it slightly larger. And see if that helps. I think that flippin' helped a lot, actually. Wow. Okay, sweet. So what's happening here is the water is shooting off from three different sources. I'm going to now connect it to a button press. I think I will make it something like triangle. And I'll set playback mode to once. Oh, sorry. And now when I press triangle, it'll draw this water from multiple sources draw it from multiple so ah, okay cool. okay friends so we had a bit of a problem with um the the water getting spawned and i've just uh, discovered a bit of a fix so what we're going to do is we're going to go timeline and uh, we're going to delete this connection here and we're going to put the emitter in a timeline so by default this will probably be about two seconds long we're going to make it sort of just under a second and we're going to reduce the size of this timeline to you know about a second that looks cool then we're going to connect it to the 
trigger zone. So when it detects water pool, it's going to start this timeline. This timeline will, of course, be playback mode set to once. And also, when it detects, it's going to restart the timeline. So that's looking cool. Uh, however, friends, we're also going to go into our sort of water stream, water blast move over here. And we're going to reduce the uh, duration of the water pool tag so that it's just for like a split second. So it's just one frame and it's, it's active there. Because when you use the ability, it's going to be like, cha-ching, water pool is active. And then it'll be like, sweet, I've seen that it's active. And then it will activate this timeline. So let us give this a try, friends. I think it'll now be working quite fabulously. And uh, sorry for the trial and error, but I, I enjoy sort of, you know, showing you guys some of the errors and the, and the difficulties so that, you know, you become more robust creators in the process. So we do it there. Then we try again. We try again. We can even be like before the previous um, thing has sort of ended. Now what's happening here is there's probably too much, <laughs> too, too much going on. Whooshing. Ah, you know what happened there. The reason why it stopped, friends, is because, look, it'll happen again, maybe. Okay, you see why it stopped here? Because the B that I projected, it sort of, in other words, this chap that I emitted, it disappeared. So they didn't have anything to move towards. So that's the reason why it, um, that's the reason why it sort of got stuck in, in midair. Um, yeah, no, if that, if that does become a problem, all you have to do is make it so that the emitter is also short once again. So that we go like this. <laughs> now the reason this was going funny was because they're moving towards A. <laughs> or sorry, it's moving towards B. But B is now spawning behind it. <laughs> so the reason that you, the, the way that you'll get around this, friends, is you can either make the emitter like a certain length or you can just make it so that the ability can't be spammed. And of course, the way you'll do that is very simple. You'll go into logic and processing, get yourself a counter, connect the triangle button or whatever button press you like to plus. When it's full, it will then play the timeline. When the timeline ends, it will reset the count. So that way, you can press it multiple times, but it won't activate again until it is done. So that's looking pretty cool, friends. I'm sorry that the, the, the water effect isn't like super amazing. It's a little bit tricky to make the water effect in dreams. And I thought the, the main part is creating kind of like a... Um, getting the logic of the move down um, and the look, I think uh, I'll leave up to you guys in terms of how your water looks. But yes, friends, so that is how you get the water stream. It was a bit of a tricky one. Thank you for um, thank you for bearing with me for this one. It's a, a little bit tricky. You might also want to make it so that your character sort of stays still so that the animations aren't, you know, being too funky. Swish. And of course, once again, you can make it so that there are multiple sources and if they are too far away, you won't be able to actually sort of drain water from them. So that's looking pretty cool. Swoosh. Fabulous. And of course, the last thing is we're going to go to our little sculpture here and we're going to make it invisible. So that we can't see the little block flying off into the distance when we use our ability. So now we can do a little water shot. Swoosh. Swoosh. That comes out of our little water bottle. And we can do a big old stream as well, which is looking pretty shmami. Pretty sweet indeed, friends. Alrighty, on to the next. Alrighty, friends. So next on our list is, it's kind of called like the ice prison. And basically what you do is you sort of shoot up some water and then it freezes. So you could call it like, I don't know, splash and freeze or just water freeze or like freeze explosion or whatever it might be. Um, you know, there's a lot of sort of various names you could give it, but I think Ice Prison is the technical one. So let's get into it. So what I'm going to do is start with a paint, go into paint mode, then I'm going to go guides, surface snap. For flex, I think I'll choose splat. Splat's a pretty good one, but of course you can go with anything. And as for the color, I think I will go with, um, let's just go for like a kind of a blue. Alrighty, then I'm going to go tools and I'm going to go draw flex. Now with draw flex, what's cool about it is if you hold R2 down, it's like a very thick um, stroke. And if you let go of it, it becomes sort of thinner. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to create like a bit of a, like a splash effect. So it starts thick and then it sort of tapers off towards the end. 
not the best okay let's try that again and it tapers off towards the end it doesn't have to be perfect just create a bit of a cha 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 tapers, tapers off towards the end i just create kind of like a bit of a a bit of a um kind of just a bit of a splash sort of an arrangement um that's that looks pretty cool um now what i'm going to do is grab a grid snap and just make it so that it's pointing upwards that's looking cool then I want in square on this chap you can turn the old grid snap off now we are going to go to duplicates and we're going to go around hemisphere so that we've got a nice it's kind of like it explodes like upwards so imagine that this is like the ground and it's going to go and it explodes upwards like that you can of course increase the amount of copies that's totally up to you. If you go 100%, you'll get like a nice sort of um, sort of semicircle vibe. Uh, you can, of course, also do a little bit of scale jitter, and that'll make it so that um, they aren't all the same length. Um, so yeah, mess around with those things. Um, change the amount of copies. Change the scale jitter just to give you a bit of variation. Oh, ah! Of course, if you make it 100%, it'll be very crazy. So keep it uh, keep it at whatever you like. Nothing too high. And that's looking cool at the moment. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to animation and we're going to go playback speed. And we're going to leave it as, let's say, 240%. I mean, it can be anything. We'll experiment with this. Then we'll go pulse. And then we're going to go loop and we're going to turn that off. So basically it'll go once and then it'll stop. But what we're going to do is make it so that the trail length is pretty long. So it's going to go... And basically what we want to happen is... When it gets to a certain point, it's going to like stop, like we have it now, and it's going to be sort of frozen. So we might actually want to increase the trail length even more. So it goes, and we want it to like say, stop in that sort of a region, slightly before that maybe. So what we're going to do is, let's actually make it 300 to stop, because we want it to look like a splash. So in the beginning, it's going to actually be moving fast, so it's going to go, and then we want it to sort of stop. So, at the moment, that is looking pretty cool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to attach a microchip to this little this little paint stroke. Now, it's sometimes difficult. I think I've got it there. No. <laughs> it's, it's sometimes difficult to attach a blimmin' microchip. I'll quickly just set the playback speed to zero. Loop. There we go. Okay. Um, if you're struggling to sort of see what's what, it's because although there's all these copies here, the like physical object is actually here. So you've just got to kind of see see that you've lined it up nicely. So I'm going to go microchip. There we go. I've attached the microchip to my painting. I'm going to go X-ray just so that I can see it again. And I'm going to now add a timeline. So I'll go animate timeline. And what we're going to add into this timeline are some keyframes. And these keyframes are going to slow down the playback speed on the animation there so that it sort of it splashes and then it slows down and then it's going to stop entirely so that it looks like it freezes and then it's going to you know sort of dissipate. So I'm just going to leave a keyframe there. And now we're going to go back to our paint our little painting here and change those settings again so we have it so that we are not looped. We'll have it at a thousand percent speed. Of course, this will depend on your own thing. Mess around with this as you desire. And so go. So that's what it looks like at first. So it's like a. It's a nice splash of water. It's going a little bit fast. So what happens is it'll splash and then it will slow down. And the position of this keyframe we're going to change around just to experiment to see what's what. And we're get, we're going to make it zero. So this keyframe is going to make it so that. The playback speed is zero. In other words, it stops. So let's see what this looks like. Well, of course, go L1 and X to create a bit of a gradient. So it'll go, what? Okay, that was a little bit too fast. So it'll go, what? So this is the kind of vibe we're looking for. It goes and then it like stops. But of course, if it's still blue, it still looks a bit like water. So what we'll do also is we'll go here and we'll press L1 and square on our painting. And then in coat po uh, properties, you're going to go tint amount 200%. Luckily, it's on white by default, but you can make it any color that you desire. We will leave it at white. And we'll go 200% with the tint amount. So now it'll go whoosh, and it turns to ice, and then it'll sort of, you know, dissipate. Um, 
In the event that you want that dissipation to go slightly more smoothly, you can of course create a bit of a gradient there as well. So it'll go whoosh. And of course, you can um, slightly adjust this. So if you're like, oh, I want it to be slightly earlier, you can move that maybe a little bit frame faster. Whoosh, and then it sort of appears over here. The enemy will be frozen, and then it will, of course, dissipate. If you don't want the sort of slow transition out, you can, of course, not have a keyframe at all, and you can just be like, swishing, and then it'll go, dish, so it'll, you know, disappear very quickly. That's all, of course, up to you, friends. Something else that we will want to do, though, friends, is... Um, because, I mean, if you like it as it is, that's pretty cool, but I think it's especially fabulous when you can actually see the effect that it has on an enemy. So we're going to quickly add in some enemy logic. The, all, the only thing that we have to do here is add a little tag, and this tag will be, we'll call this freeze. So that's looking cool. So we've got a freeze tag, and um, not the actual game, <laughs> but we've got a freeze tag over here. And the freeze tag, of course, correlates with the position of the paint stroke. So if we sort of press L3 to reset, it's going to correlate with kind of the center of the paint stroke. Um, I mean, you can make it sort of slightly higher because, of course, when it explodes outwards, when it explodes outwards, the center is more like here about. So you could make it around that region. Okay, cool. And that's where the sort of freeze freeze tag is. Um, you can change the sort of size of the tag, of course, don't make it after that keyframe because that's not, that's not going to be right, of course. Um, because you don't want to get frozen after the water's already sort of cooled. Um, and friends, I'm kind of also making this a bit of a simple one. So I'm not making this go from like a water source. You can make it go from a water source that you can only make it sort of appear wherever their water source is. For that, you can use a sort of similar system to what we used for the water stream. Um, you can just make it so that like an emitter is triggered when you use this ability but for this I'm just going to show you the logic of like what it would what it would take you know assuming that the floor is all water um, <laughs> that sort of a thing but yes let's get on to the enemy and what it'll look like to adjust some enemy logic with this so we're going to go to gameplay gear and get ourselves into the blank puppet collection and we'll get ourselves a blank sliding puppet and this is just going to be our little enemy probably from the fire nation fire nation and uh, what we're going to do for this chap is we're going to make it so that uh, when they detect the freeze tag, so I'm just going to sense as an input, trigger zone, and I'm going to say, okay, cool, when they detect, for things to detect, we're looking for a tag, and they're going to look for the freeze tag. So when they detect the freeze tag, it will be, you know, we'll make it so that it's like in this kind of a region. So if they detect it, then we're going to play a little uh, timeline. And this will basically just be a timeline of them like looking all frozen. So we'll add in a default keyframe, an empty one I should say. We'll make it pretty short, maybe just like three seconds or something. And what's going to happen is we're just going to do a little bit of funky animation here. To make it look like they're getting like frozen. So they'll go sort of like... You might, <laughs> you might want to change the color of them as well if you fancy. So they sort of just look a bit like... I don't know how you I don't know how you animate someone to look like frozen. I think that looks kind of frozen. Maybe not so much tilt there. You know what I mean? Maybe slightly like off the ground. <laughs> Maybe slightly at an angle. And of course they won't be moving. So they they will be like that for a little bit and then they will eventually return to their original position so when they get hit by that tag they're going to be like oh <laughs> sorry it like correlates directly with where this guy is okay so when they get hit by that tag they're going to be like let's just play it quickly they're going to be like and they're going to be all frozen yeah and then they'll go back to their sort of resting position Okay, sweet. And also make it so that the timeline is on playback mode set to once. Okay, sweet. So now let's place our chap over here. We might want to go to our painting and make it slightly opaque, less opaque, or change the opacity to 75%. So it's like, Wah. you might be able to see this chap a little bit better. I'm just going to change the position there. Wah. 
Okay, it's still a little bit hard to see, so I might increase the opacity or decrease the opacity even more. Let's make it like 40%. So it goes... We can see our chap is sort of frozen there. It's not the fanciest, friends. It's not the craziest amount of logic. But if you're like, if you have like particular enemies in your game or whatever, you might be like, okay, cool. When they are frozen, it's also going to make it so that they... It's also going to make it so that they cannot move, you know. It might disable their attacks. Um, it might, so for example here, I've changed their, I've made them immovable, I've reduced their movement speed, you know, disable their jump, all, all these sorts of things that you can do, and for example, if your character, like, attacks when they're nearby, you know, all, all, all these sorts of, like, stun mechanics that you can, um, add to your game, um, can be sort of correlated very easily by just putting into a timeline, and just with the trigger zone, just like that, so, yeah. Yeah, and they get frozen. You might you might also want to disable the old procedural animation, and you'll do that by going into behavior and just untick all of these three, or deselect whatever you might say. So our chap kind of gets frozen there, and that looks pretty cool. Um, yes, friends. So that's really all there is to it. Uh, for this for this little this little chap over here, our little paint stroke, we're now going to want to emit it. So let's give our character a little bit of a, a timeline. So this is our this is our old one. You just have to uh, you just have to ignore that for now. And what we oh this is our other ability. Sorry, we're going to add in a little timeline. And this timeline nothing fancy. I'm just going to give them an animation of sort of like raising their hands. So it's going to go like okay cool. A bit of a bend in the knees. A bit of a Spreading out of the arms. There's also so many water bending abilities, friends. It's like, this video's been so hard because I'm just like, what of the, like, you know, 10, 20, 30 abilities do I actually, like, make videos about? So, let me know if you want some more. So, they're going to go, huh? they'll sort of get into position and then they'll sort of be like, here. You know, they'll sort of lift their arms up. Maybe throw their head back a bit. Maybe turn off that mirror, that puppet mirror. Give them a bit of staggered leg placement. So, you have a bit of a build up. Yeah! <laughs> Not the most impressive. I'll maybe bring their arms out in front, a little bit more in front. Let's have a look see now. Yeah. So that looks a little bit cooler. I might make the arms point up a little bit more there. Yeah. Okay, that looks cool. Nothing um nothing too fancy. As ever. We keep it simple. So it's gonna be like yeah. And then when we get to this point where the character's like cha, you know. As their arms are raising up, we can add a little uh, emitter. You can add it here when the when the hands are like at the highest point, or you can add it sort of as the hands are being raised. And what we are going to emit is, well, first we're going to say emit speed zero. We're going to say emit mode once. We're going to press L1 and circle so that we're out of our puppet, but still in the emitter. And we're going to say object to emit this lovely blue business over here and we're going to emit it sort of kind of just in front of our character you might want to line this up just so that it's fairly central a little bit in front of your character of course and that is looking cool so it's going to be like yeah they do it and there's like a nice splash and then you form the ice prison slash avalanche slash Splash and freeze, you know, sort of a thing. I think for this one, I'll make it uh, R1. Why not? And I'm going to go playback mode set to once. So let's have a look. Yeah, so our chap is frozen there in the ice, which is looking pretty cool. I can hit him with some splash. Wait, splash, splash. He also can't follow me. <laughs> See you later, loser. Um, stay there. <laughs> so friends it's not the fanciest like in terms of the uh, the appearance of it it's not the um the craziest looking 
In fact, it's probably the least impressive looking of them all. Um, when it comes to the visuals and all these sorts of things, you can really, you know, go to town and have a lot of fun. Um, but for me, I kind of just want to show you the like logic elements that are the most important uh, at this point, at this point in this point in time. Um, so I think uh, this is a pretty cool thing for just you know freezing your enemies in place and all that sort of business. Um, alrighty, friends, on to the next one. Whoop whoop. Hey friends, now I'm going to show you how to do a water slash ice surf. So for this thing we're going to create like a little bit of like a sort of ice surfboard. And then also have some water sort of spraying out behind you as you sort of slide around. So this is the water mobility technique that I'm going to teach you. There's a bunch that you could potentially do for this. There's also the like water tornado. You often see that one. But generally they use that to sort of move up into the air, you know, if they sort of jump out of the water. Although they do use it to move across the water as well. But I think kind of just a, a bit of a slide, like a water slide, is also pretty cool. So let's get stuck in with the water slash ice surf. So first thing I'm going to do is make a little bit of a, um, like a little surfing board. So for this one, friends, you can actually skip this entirely if you want to actually just have it like water based. So just go to the section where we talk about how to shoot water out of your sort of feet sort of a thing. But in this version, I'm going to make it so that we've got a little surfboard and it's going to shoot water out of it. So you can make it pretty thin. That's looking pretty cool. Uh, you can make it like a kind of a, a bit of a light blue. You might want to put on a grid snap just so that it's straight to begin with. Very nice. And then to get that icy look, you'll want to go shininess 100 and also increase the metalness. You can make it 100% or you can sort of, you know mess around with it and see where your happy medium is. You might you might also want to make it a little bit bigger so that it sort of suits our character in it like that. Okay, sweet. So we have the uh, little ice board, which is looking cool. Now what we'll want to do, friends, is make a bit of a water effect, like a splash effect behind where we are. So for that part, we're going to do is go into paint mode. And for this one, we don't have to have uh, the surface snap on. We can just leave it as is. I'm going to go colors, blue, whichever blue you like, whichever fleck you like. I think I'm going to go with impressionist, just to have a bit of a wave sort of vibe. And I'm going to create like a bit of a wave that sort of flattens out. Um, really nothing fancy here, friends. It's just going to be like, woohoo. I might do that again, just so that I get the impressionist brush stroke, brush stroke a little bit better. Yeah, so I basically just want to have like a bit of like a bit of a curl and then it flattens out. So it looks like the water sort of erupts from you and then flattens out. Okay, sweet. Even just one stroke is fine. You can also do one, another one that's a little bit smaller and make it white. Or a lighter blue, whatever you whatever you sort of desire. Make like a little a white one, a smaller one, it'll go just underneath. Now we'll go O1 and square. We'll go duplicates, and I think we'll go duplicates on plane. Now, at first it looks a little bit crazy, but if you reduce the spread, it creates a bit of a it creates a bit of a nice vibe, because now it looks like the water's kind of all together. You can also increase the scale jitter so that the water isn't all the same size, and of course you can increase the amount of swish swing. You can also do stuff like increase the or copy the original, you know, spread it out a little bit so it's a little bit wider. If it's a little bit too wide. You can either reduce those copies you made, delete them rather, or you can go into duplicates and reduce the amount of copies, reduce the spread, that sort of business. But I think that looks pretty cool. Scale jit is looking pretty sweet as well. And now if we play, nothing's really going on. So what we're going to want to do is increase the playback speed. And we're already starting to get like a pretty cool, like bit of a splash, a splash vibe going on here. Or just like a watery vibe. You can, of course, increase it to pulse, so it creates a bit more of like a wave splash effect. But if, when you increase, if you make it pulse, you're going to want to increase the playback speed a lot more. And also, the trail length. So you still get that vibe of the water being long. If the water is short, of course, you'll just see like individual little um, flecks. So you'll want to make the trail length pretty long if you want to give it that, um, that nice watery vibe. That flowing sort of sensation. You can also go time offset. So that the water doesn't all flow together, it sort of flows um, in bits, you know. 
or you can have it all flowing together, which I think is also pretty cool. Happy, hap find your happy medium, friends. That's what I reckon. You can also do a jet trail, and then it'll leave like a little bit of a little bit of a trail as you move. Um, so you can put on jet trail as well if you if you like. Okay, sweet friends. So that is looking pretty cool. What we're going to do is we're going to go to our little surfboard, or if you don't have your surfboard, um, you can just put the we're going to use an emitter to shoot out this water. So for the surfboard version, I'm going to put on a microchip. I'm going to have a little microchip, which is looking cool. Our microchip is there. And now in this microchip, I'm going to put down an emitter. And the emitter is going to emit at zero speed. It's going to emit this water. And it's going to be kind of like where the surfboard is but it's also going to emit it uh, multiple times or continuously and the time between emits will be 0, 0.0 so it'll emit it very quickly but the emitted object will only last for half a second all of these values you can um, shall we say tweak you know to see to see whatever works for you so here we have a here we have a little bit of a mock-up if we drag the board with us we can see that we get like a bit of a nice whoosh, whoosh, a bit of a nice water effect following us as we go. Whoosh, it looks nice and sort of beefy, as it were. So that's looking pretty cool, friends. Next, what we we'll want to do is put a teleporter onto our board, and this teleporter is going to move to a particular tag. Now, I think what we'll do for this one is make ourselves a new tag and just go player. You might have some tags of your own if you're making your own puppets. So whatever tags you use will be totally perfect. I would just say what you'll want to do is make it so that the tag is aligned with your character's feet. So that'll be our player tag. We're going to go for our uh, little surfboard teleporter and we're going to say we're going to say which uh, which tag we're going to look at. We're going to look at player and we're going to match target position and we're going to ta uh, match target orientation. If we don't do this, then if we turn to the side, our board is going to keep pointing forward. Now, friends, it doesn't always line up perfectly at first, so just press R3, and let's quickly turn off the emitter so that this isn't getting in the way. But if you turn on R3, oh, you'll see then it's kind of a little bit off to the side, so you'll need to sort of adjust it. Um, okay. Sorry, there's actually, <laughs> there's actually a thunderstorm in Cape Town at the moment. Uh, I'm not sure if you just heard a bit of a thunderbolt, but I think... Uh, Having a bit of rain and thunder is uh, pretty cool for doing an elemental, you know, water element video. <laughs> the lightning bending one will be next. <laughs> okay, sweet. So that's looking pretty cool, but it's a little bit weird because it's pushing our character upwards because of the teleporter. And because the old ice surfboard is collidable. So if we make collidable, if we make it not collidable, so, sorry, I did that a bit quick. If we go to our surfboard, the sculpture itself, we go to physical properties, we turn off collidable, it'll make it so that the surfboard kind of just aligns to where our feet are, and if we move our dude around, it'll match them, which is looking cool. So now we can turn this back on. Not only that, but now we can make ourselves a little timeline, and this will be our surf timeline. Let's go into our controller, let's connect it, let's connect it to circle. By default, that'll make you quit your puppet, or like leave your puppet. So we're going to make circle our slide now. So I just deleted the old connections that made you depossess your puppet. And I'm going to go connect it to our, our little timeline here. And this timeline that we've just put down, I'm just going to have a keyframe here. And then I'm going to add another keyframe, which will be the pose that we do when we're sort of sliding. And th for this one, do a bit of a, you know, the arms are sort of backwards. Swish. I put on the, the puppet mirror for that one. But for the legs, I'm going to do a bit of variation in the legs. One will be forward, one will be back. So I think I'll do sort of like this. One will be forward, one will be back. Lower the stance a bit, give a bit of a tilt. Point forward. And you're also going to want to tilt the head upwards. Okay, sweet. And then what's going to happen is our character is going to get into that pose. And it's going to last a few seconds. Or not, not too many, maybe like two seconds. So at the moment it's probably about uh, like 1.8 seconds. And then they'll get back to their sort of original pose. So if we do a quick play, it'll go swish, 
they get into their position and they return. Now, what you also want to do is put down a keyframe, and in this keyframe, we're going to make it so that our characters' other animations and such uh, aren't, uh, you know, interfering. So what we'll do for that is we'll go to behavior with the little gears, and we'll turn off procedural animation. Scissors. Now, this might vary depending on the kind of puppet you're using, uh, but those are the kind of things you'll do. You might also sort of create a node, if you're using like a, a basic puppet, you might create a node between their puppet interface and their idle animation or their walk animation, all those sorts of things, and sort of deactivate the node when this is active. So for this, we'll say no anims, or no proc actually is even better. Proc, which is of course short for procedural animation. No proc anim. And then I'm going to put down another keyframe that actually makes our slide more impressive by increasing our run speed. And you can also increase the walk speed or you can set the walk speed to zero because the walk speed basically having walk speed and run speed basically just means you can have two speeds and each of those speeds will have a idle will have a particular animation associated with it. So if you m reduce walk speed to zero, you'll just have your run speed sort of going on and you won't have sort of speed variations and so on. You also want to reduce your turn speed because of course if you're moving super fast you can't turn as quickly. You might also want to increase your acceleration, might don't worry about deceleration too much. But yes friends, so that's looking pretty cool. And this is gonna be our we'll just say movement effects. Okay, cool. That's cool. So we've got our, our animation. We've got our no procedural animation. We've got our movement effect. And last, not another keyframe, sorry. We're going to go into movers and output and we're going to go emitter. And this emitter is going to emit at zero speed our little surfboard. Whoops, sorry, I emitted the floor by accident. It's going to emit the surfboard. Uh, where is it going to emit that surfboard? It's going to emit it by our feet. But actually, because the surfboard is connected to a teleporter, you could really emit it anywhere because the teleporter will immediately take effect. But we're only going to emit one. And it is going to last for, let's say, 1.8 seconds. If we, Where I'm getting that value from is I'm just judging. I'm saying, okay, it goes up to the two-second mark, but it only starts about here, which is probably about you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 seconds. So that's why I'm making it that long. Okay, sweet. If you don't have the surfboard, um, instead of emitting the surfboard, you'll emit the water effect, which I showed you a little bit earlier, which we made a little bit earlier with the paint strokes. So now let's give it a try. We're also going to say uh, on our timeline, playback mode and set that to once. So let's have a look. So I'm going to go, whoa, dang. Okay, I'm a little bit fast there. So that's looking, that's looking pretty cool. Um, I think we're moving a little bit too fast. It's a little bit too uh, difficult to control your character when he's moving that fast, when they are moving that fast. So I'm just going to make it, let's say, 5.5. So there we're like decently faster, but not super fast. So that's looking pretty cool. We've got a little sort of surfboard going on there, and it actually looks pretty... Um, I think... The only thing is the water is looking a little bit lagged. It's looking a little bit like um, far behind us. So I'm going to turn on preview invisibility. And with our little surfboard here, I'm going to move it so that it's a little bit further ahead. So that it's kind of, it'll spawn almost where we're going to be. Oh, sorry. Make sure, you, make sure you move the water and not the floor by accident. Grab that little white ball over there. Okay, sweet. Let's see what that looks like. So that's looking a little bit better, friends, if you ask me. Um, if the look of the water is not quite doing it for you, that's totally fine. What you might want to do for this and actually for your ice explosion over here is you might want to go to the Fleck properties, um, increase the ruffle, increase the impasto, maybe change the looseness. There's always stretch as well. Just, you know, mess around with these things until you get, like, a sense of water that you kind of enjoy. Um, wow. A sense of water that is quitching, that works for you. Um, so, basically, friends, we've got our little, our little slide there. That's looking pretty cool. We've got our, our water push. 
We've got our, our water redirect. I think there might be a bit of a placement issue. Yeah, okay, with our <laughs> with our explosive ice there. Um, I think the when I moved the timeline, I must have... Yeah, I moved the timeline, and so that changed the position. So I'm just fixing this quickly. Please bear with me. Change the angle of it there. Okay, cool. And yes, friends, so now we also have our slide. So let's look at our slide once again. That's looking pretty cool. I think we are winning. And if you like look behind you, you get like a nice water effect going. Um, if you feel that the surfboard disappears too quickly, all that you have to do is go into your emitter and increase the amount of time that it's there. Maybe give it an extra 0.3 seconds. So here we go. So that's actually pretty cool. With all these things, friends, it's important to just add some tweaks and, you know, don't worry too much about getting exactly right the first time because you'll want to change the position and how long it's um, being emitted for or rather it's emitted object lifetime. Uh, all these things. Uh, and yes, friends, oh, this is actually looking really cool now. So that is how you do the water slash ice slide. Okay, friends, and that is the last of our abilities. W wait a second. What's this eerie glow I see in the top of my screen? <gasps> friends, it's the full moon. And under the light of the full moon, there is one more technique that I can teach you. Bloodbending. Okay, friends. So to do bloodbending, it's actually pretty straightforward. It's similar to my force choke ability guide. Um, what we're going to do is, firstly, we're going to create ourselves a little, a little tag. And this tag is going to be... Um, we're going to put it in front of our character. And we're going to name it Bloodbend. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to be able to grab the enemy character and sort of move them towards us. That sort of a thing. Um, so what we're going to do with our cool little Bloodbend tag, which is over here. We are going to create a keyframe. And just leave it there for now. Now we're going to deactivate the Bloodbend tag. And make it so that when this keyframe is pressed the bloodbend tag will be on now friends we're going to connect this uh keyframe to a button press let's make it something like what have we got left let's make it uh r2 so r2 will be our bloodbend button and we're also going to make it so that our character gets into like a bit of a pose when they bloodbend Provided you um, you aren't Noah Talk, you'll you'll need the full moon as well, friends. You'll need the full moon, unless you're a particularly gifted uh, waterbender slash bloodbender. And then on this keyframe, we're also going to do a bit of a slow power up. Let's say 0.5 seconds, slow power down. Okay, sweet. So now when I press R2, my character is going to get into their pose. Um, you might also want to deactivate poses there. With the same keyframe. So we're all doing this in one keyframe. Uh, not the not best practice, friends. Because of course it'll you know mess with it a little bit. Cha -cha -ching. So our character's arms are or not best practice because I'm not saying what, what everything happens in this particular keyframe. So not the best technique ever, but I'm just sort of showing you it for a, a bit of a laugh and a little bit of coolness. Um and you know, a little bit a little bit of your you know inner blood bender coming out there. So Next up is actually going to depend, similar to with the freeze sort of animation, uh, it's going to depend on our, our particular enemy that we have. So when they detect freeze, of course, they do their freeze pose. So now, when they detect blood bend, you see it's working in a similar way. When they detect blood bend, they are going to also activate a timeline. So they're going to detect blood bend. There it was, actually. And we'll make it pretty big so that you can get blood ben bent from quite a while away. Quite a distance away, I should say. And then we're going to make it so that they are going to do like a little bit of like a twitchy, twitchy pose. So they'll be sort of like, ooh, yeah. You know, like, ooh. Let 
Maybe this sort of like arm is bending and boo. You know, blood bending is hectic, guys. You shouldn't be blood bending people if you have water bending skills. You know, it's like it's definitely evil. Um, but you know, for the sake of this tutorial, um, you know, we're treating it as perfectly, perfectly fine. Alrighty. Okay, sweet, and then it'll be sort of like, ooh, they'll sort of be twitching. Because, you know, you're bloodbending them, which isn't fun. If you get a bit of the old joint snap, don't worry about it. That's perfect for this kind of animation. This is a time where you kind of want joint snap, you know? Who? So let's see what this looks like. It's kind of like the freakier it looks, the better. Oh wait, so, so we don't want the default keyframes, of course. We want them to look a little bit like they're getting blood bent. Of course, we'll also go loop. So with this one, it's going to go like this. <laughs> it looks, looks a little bit silly. So I might slow down the old, the old anims there ever so slightly. That's not bad, actually. Okay, sweet. Next is, so when they detect it, they're going to do their little loopy animation. But not only that, they're also going to lift off the ground. So in order to do that, we're going to attach a follower. It looks like there's a little ghost following a, a human. And this follower is going to move towards Bloodbend. The strength is going to be 100%, so is the damping, but the speed is going to be, like, super slow. So it's going to be like, once we do it... Just do a demonstration. They are going to move towards the blood bend position. Okay, so maybe the the damping is a little bit strong. A little bit more thunder there for you. So we can reduce the damping ever so slightly. We can reduce the strength even a little bit as well. Maybe increase the speed. So, of course, with all these things, you'll want to... Okay, I think the strength is too low there. So, let's go strength 100%. All of these things we tweak. So, that's looking pretty cool. So, they sort of move to the position that we're blood bending them. And now we can, of course... Blood bend them, and then yeah, what he <laughs> chuck them off the cliff or whatever it might be. This is very dark. Uh, w what you might also want to do is, uh, you know, you could make it so that when you blood bend them, they get knocked out. For example, so if you wanted to do that, you know, it's kind of like a blood bend is like a bit of a finishing move. So for that, you'll just make it so that they do just like a bit of an animation, and they're like, Ooh, blah, 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 and then they sort of fall over. And of course, they'll make those sound effects as well. So they might go like, we might actually just copy those, those keyframes entirely. So that our characters do a little bit of a wobbly thing. They sort of, go sort of like, Ugh. and then they sort of like fall to the ground, like a bloodbender sort of knockout. Shout out to all the uh, Legend of Korra fans. Uh, if you love bloodbending, definitely watch Legend of Korra. Plenty of it in there. And then my dude is going to sort of, you know, fall down and be cared. Boo. Not the uh, not the most elegant animations, I will say. Not my, not my greatest work, but I think it'll do the job. Bleh. So then they fall to the ground. Okay, so he goes, and he gets cared. And we can even make it keep changes, so it's like, he's down for the count. So we do it, and then it'll be like, so that's looking pretty cool. I think, in fact, what I could connect this to is, you could make like another blood bending technique, so you'll have the one that sort of lifts them up, so we'll say this is blood bend lift. 
blood bend lift. And then this one, which is a complete copy, will be blood bend K -O. blood bend K -O. And we can connect that to R2. Oh sorry, L2. And then um the only difference will be that here we've got our blood bend tag. We're going to have we're gonna copy this chap. We'll put on a quick grid snap. Copy this chap. Change him to blood bend KO. Go to our keyframes. Make it so that blood bend lift doesn't activate blood bend KO. Make it so that blood bend KO doesn't activate our original blood bend. And then we can move this one into that position and it'll work just the same. Uh, sorry, and then I'll make a new trigger zone and this one will check for blood bend. KO, and when it does so, it'll knock my dude out just like that. So we have our blood bend lift, then we have blood bend KO, blood bend KO. Ooh. So, so our chap looks a little bit funny. Ooh. Um, one thing we'll want to do is make it so that these, this one in particular, plays once. This one you can play on loop because it's as long as you hold the button, he's getting blood bended, blood bent. And this one will be once. So if you detect it, it's like, Ugh, he gets KO'd. You'll also, of course, add in the classic keyframes that disable poses and disable procedural animations, just as it works for our player. You'll take this all the way to the end. You'll make this one, of course, no proc anim, no procedural animations, or poses in this case. So now if we do it, It'll be like, yeah, gish, so they get cared, yeah, gish. So that's looking pretty cool. Um, sweet vibes, cool vibes. So friends, there you are. I've given you four water bending techniques. There really are a million billion, um, as well as some secret forbidden techniques um, that you can only use under the light of the moon, unless you're a particularly gifted water bender slash blood bender. And yes, friends. So that is blood bending. Just some some tips, some techniques for sort of lifting your opponents in the air and then incapacitating them, gagoosh, if need be. Okay, sweet friends. Thank you, thank you. Hey friends, so in summary, we've got the water shot, which is looking cool. We do that with frame by frame sculpting animation. We've got the water stream, which is also looking fab. That can come from any water source. Next, we've got the ice prison or the sort of splash and freeze technique, which is very cool. We can use it to incapacitate our enemies. Next, we have the water slide, which is looking very nice. Gives us a nice watery, flowy sort of vibe going on there. Next, we've got some forbidden techniques, such as blood bending, where we can pick up our enemies and sort of move them around sort of a thing. And of course, we can also use it to incapacitate them immediately. So there you are, friends. Um, I have just shown you some water bending techniques, and I hope that you enjoyed these, friends. Um, I really enjoyed making this video. It did take me some extra time because I wanted to put some extra effort into it and make it look cool. Um, there's still a little bit of thunder going on in the background. Um, making water look good is a little bit tricky, friends, um, but I wanted to show you the main logic behind it because making water look nice is basically a whole tutorial in itself, and I may not even be the best person at it. I admit that I'm not the best water animator. But I wanted to show you the logic behind it, and I think at the moment what we've got is a pretty cool system. Um, I especially like the water stream because, of course, you can just clone your water sources and put them sort of all over the map, um, which I feel like is, you know, the most sort of authentic water bendy sort of move. Um, because you can really, oh sorry, you can really get that sense of, you know, being able to control a source aside from something that you, you know, just like punch out of the air, like fire or earth or something like that. Like you really get that cool sensation of being able to water bend from any source, um, which is cool. Uh, but yes, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. There's a lot of status effects going on. You know, there's a lot of different uh, effects and, uh, you know, you need to also have your enemies logic sorted out as well. But thank you so much for bearing with me for this video. Definitely going to be one of the longest, if not the longest. But uh, thank you for joining me th on this adventure. Thank you for voting in the poll. And yes, thank you so much, friends. I shall catch you for the next one. A peace out. Hey, thanks for watching, friends. I just want to give a massive shout out to my Patreon patrons, or as I like to call them, the Mean Knights. 
Thank you so much, Tap Giles. Ooh, thanks so much, Tap Sensei. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And Salt Levels Max, my first patron. Ah, oh, ye. Friends, if you want to support your boy and get access to some bonus content, consider becoming a patron. Thanks for watching, friends. Peace out. Mm -hmm.